to the Alpha Game Reviews Let's Play of Prison Architect. I am Matt Dewmaster, and this is actually a lovely little strategy game, which is currently in Alpha, despite being available for about two years. Uh, but what makes this game good as an Alpha is that it's been continuously updated, and as a result, it's become a lot of fun. So. What I'm going to do here is I've basically turned on all the options that are available now. We've got water, we've got buildings, we've got trees, we've got continuous intake of prisoners. Uh, which means we're going to be getting more every day, forever. Uh, so it's going to be challenging, uh, it's going to be large, it's going to be an obstacle to deal with some of what we've got here. Uh, because we've got a big old lake right in the north section of our plot which is taking up a significant amount of room. I know that normally I would uh, probably expand a prison back this way and then start building wings up to the north and to the south. But obviously that's not going to work here. Um, we actually have a really interesting little peninsula area, uh, which be interesting to see how we work that into the prison as well. So let's go ahead and get started here. Put the time on regular. Now, First thing that you're going to want to do with any good prison is set up some, uh, set up a bit of a perimeter. And that means you need fences. Your prisoners can't escape from the very start of the game, and while that's not particularly common, um, I have had a prisoner run straight out the front door as soon as he arrived. Which was kind of hilarious but also not great from my bottom line because you get a bonus depending on how much time you've gone without any incidents and that is an incident when a prisoner escapes. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to build some fences that will help keep my prisoners where they belong in the prison uh, and give me a little room to expand. I'm not going to you know obviously build a prison or build a fence around this entire area right now because that would be very uh, time consuming and my workers only have so much time available to them before my first prisoners arrive. We got 23 in-game hours just about. But this basic fence will keep the prisoners in for now and then as the prison expands we'll make it larger and larger. Probably add multiple layers to it as well. Um, the fence is important not just because prisoners can head out the front door, uh, which they do like to do, but also because they can actually dig under your walls. And uh, that's a pretty major threat uh, major of escape when, you, when you're building your prison at first because you're generally going to have smaller cell blocks without you know, triple layered defenses and things like that. So it's a pretty short path for them to go digging out, you know, to the outside, and then if you lack a fence, once they're outside, you pretty much don't have any hope of catching them. They'll just run off, your guards aren't going to run any faster than them, and once they're off the map, they're count they count as escape. There's no such thing as finding them later in this game and having them re-delivered to you. So we've got our fence down. And now I'm going to do some planning. This is one of the coolest features of the game. You actually have this planning tool which lets you plot exactly where you're going to put your walls and objects and etc. before you really start building. So that it can save you a lot of money if you use it correctly. And what we want to plan for at first is a basic some ho some basic holding cells and also the basic uh, services of a kitchen, a canteen, some showers, things like that. In fact, we'll go over to the grants and we want the basic detention center and also the I think the staff yeah probably the staff will be an initiative would be a good one. So this, this pretty much gives us a to-do list of what we need to build. And since we've got these exterior areas here where deliveries are made, 
we're going to want to start there with some sort of staff areas. So I'm going to build some main hallways, or at least plan them out here. And then off of that, we're going to go ahead and make the bulk of our prison. So I know that I'm going to have at least this much space. I'm going to go ahead and put a foundation down. My workers will get started on that. And then I can continue planning what the rest of the prison is going to look like. I think that uh, up here, we're going to have some offices. It's generally good to put them up here because there's not really any chance of your prisoners getting up here and escaping. And the offices need to be 4x4, four four, so canyon the walls, that looks like it's going to be just about perfect. And go 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Alright. And the little spaces that I'm leaving here in my planning are for the actual doors. Which... I don't guess you really. I don't know if you actually need doors on offices for them to be functional. I don't. I don't think you need them at all. Uh, but it looks right. I mean, who wants an office without a door? So we'll just go ahead and plan to have that in there. We're gonna have a visitation center over here eventually, but we're not gonna start with that because we don't have the grant for it yet. There's actually a grant for making a visitation center. And then up here at the front, we should probably do our staff, um, what was it called, staff, staff room, yes, we're going to have our staff room up here. I like having the staff room up here, at least at the beginning, because it can act both as a staff room and as an extra sort of uh, go-between for different areas of your prison. Like basically a hallway. So we'll put in, we're going to say probably the staff room will be right here. And then up front, probably put a storage area. And this right here can probably be reserved for uh, future clean storage or office purposes. So you can see I required entrance. I forgot about this to add entrance, but that's easy to fix. We'll just put a staff door up here, staff door up here. Something else I want is some road gates uh, because that, that will help keep the prisoners inside the prison if for some reason they try to go out the front and run up the road. Again, your guards are not actually that athletic, so they usually will lose the prisoners if they actually get out the door and the road gate will help with that. So we're going to go ahead and put down our foundation for the offices and the visitation center as well. And fill in this little bit right here with a wall. And I'm going to speed up time so that my workers uh, get done with the fence and then they can get working on the foundation. In fact, I think I will hire a few more workers because there's going to be a lot of grant money coming in and that will keep us afloat for a while. And we don't have to worry about too much about the actual income. The early game in Prison Architect is not actually about your income. Uh, it's kind of like SimCity 2000. I remember back when I played that game. At the beginning, it was always a really good idea to get a nice um, bank loan and then you could build your city quite a bit until you had a, a good positive income and pay back the loan and then you would start the game a lot more quickly than if you hadn't done the loan at all. And it, it works the same way here except you have grants where you need to fulfill objectives. And there actually are some um, grants in quotes which are investments where you, you pay the money up front and then after a certain amount of in-game time you get it back in a form of a big old lump, lump sum payment. So we're going to put in our walls. See, you got a lot of lights in on the inventory. Um, okay, going to want to make sure you have an entrance there. 
Uh, something else we're going to want to put in very soon is our utilities. There's no external power or water in the game. Uh, you do all that yourself. And for utilities, I usually like to put the power generator and the water up here. And then I create a little restricted access area around them. I, I don't know if prisoners actually even sabotage these. I don't think they do. But in case they do, I like to eventually put a little fence around them with a staff door. It helps out there. Uh, the power generator, we don't want to put it right next to any of the walls or anything because you can surround these with capacitors to add to the capacity of the generator. And you actually have to do that pretty quickly uh, because the power generator itself doesn't produce that much power, actually. We made a little mistake there. Put in a wall when we shouldn't have, so we're going to fix that. And we're not going to make any jail doors yet because we, the workers can't actually get through jail doors. Only the guards can. So if we do that right now, it's going to be a little bit of a problem. It's going to cause our workers to get backed up. We will put in some staff doors here. We will go ahead and mark our staff room. And we'll mark some storage here so our guys know they can put deliveries in there as well. And we're going to mark that office. Where are my offices at? Sometimes I have a really hard time finding a particular room that I want to find. So we got some offices. You know, this this is more offices than we're gonna need in the short term, but um, you do need a warden to begin with, and then pretty quickly you get an accountant. Uh, there's a grant for mental health, which makes you want to grab a psychologist, and uh, you also need your security head who lets you uh, do patrols and etc. And he's really useful. You need him. So we're gonna be expanding on that. We're gonna fill these offices up pretty quickly, actually. All right, so I'm gonna pause here because we have our utilities built and I want to lay out the electrical grid a little bit. So, we're just going to go down the hallway here. That should be more than adequate to get our offices started. The workers working on that. The staff room, uh, go ahead and put some sofas in there I think. Basically all you need for a staff room apparently is some sofa. Sofas in a pot machine. <laughs> That's pretty much it. Um, that'll make your, make your guys very happy. Uh, your staff never goes home or anything like that, which seems a little silly, I guess, in a sense of realism sense, but it works as well as anything else in the gameplay sense. And they basically uh, hang out on your couch when they need the rest instead of going home to their families. Uh, it's the kind of operation that we run here at Prison Architect. So the next thing we're going to want to add, which is important, well, two things actually. We're going, to want to, we're going to want to add our holding cells, and we're going to want to add our kitchen and canteen. Uh, holding cell, um, right here is, is fine. It's perfect for a holding cell. Holding cell is not going to be really a, a permanent area to keep our prisoners, but usually the first night or two, you're going to keep them there just uh, for cost reasons. Three, four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right. So I want to be able to put eight beds along the walls and then add some benches. So that'll give me capacity for 16 in my holding cell overnight if I need it. And that'll be the only holding cell we probably need for a while. So put that there. Also looks like we added some unnecessary walls there, so get rid of those. And might as well go ahead and add our foundation for this area. Bam. Awesome, okay. And I want to plan out my cantina and kitchen. This is an area where it's a good idea to have quite a bit of room for expansion. So, so let's see. The can't I can put a jail door here and a jail door here, and that'll actually 
start the prison proper. Uh, that'll be the area past which the inmates can't go, at least for now. And then if I put my kitchen back here with a with a door here, that'll allow for staff to get in without going past the jail door, and that'll be good. It's also good for later on because you get inmate programs where they can work in your kitchen. And that's really useful, but they need to be able to actually get into the kitchen. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. All the kitchen stuff is too wide, and I like to put some stuff on the back walls here, so it's good to plan out for that. And then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Here. Let's just do this. So this is going to be our kitchen area. Right there. And this will be our canteen area. However, we don't need this much space right now. So, let's see. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. So... I think for our foundations, we'll actually put out one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We'll just put out this much, and then later on, when we need the extra room, we will. Uh, okay, do that. Then we will actually expand upon that. The canteen does get full pretty quickly. I think about day four, you usually need to get some extra space in your canteen. Uh, do we have the foundation down here? No, yes, we are. Okay, yes, we are working on the foundation there. So, let's get one of our offices ready. They actually have a warden in it. The warden's important because he's how you research things, or at least he's what enables you to research things. Uh, this is bureaucracy is your research tree, and you can't access it without a warden present. So we want him as quickly as possible, really. And offices needs this chair, desk, and a filing cabinet, and then they're good to go. So our workers will put that down. Keep them going now. Looks like, do we have our gates? Yes, we got our gates. It knows all the doors are open. That's because uh, the person's not actually active yet. All the doors stay open until um, you get some guards and some prisoners around. So uh, that means it's actually okay. I forgot to put some gel doors in. I mean, might as well do that. All right. First, though, let's handle this ball situation here. Alright, so that'll handle our wall situation. And now we can put in a large geodore. Let's say here. And we'll put one here as well for symmetry's sake. Office is ready to go, so I'm going to go ahead and hire a warden. And I'm going to have him start researching uh, health and mental health because we're going to need those for the health grant that's going to come up here pretty soon once we get our bases going. So, again, this is going to be a holding cell. Get this up and running. Come on, holding cell. Oh, okay. So I was telling you about the the power generator not having actually much power. Uh, it just shut off because it didn't have enough power. So we're gonna have to build some capacitors up there. That will expand the power and give us uh, enough to get going here. Now we'll go back to the rooms. And where, oh where, is the holding cell? There we go. Holding cell. Bam. How much time we got left? 14 hours? Looks like we're doing pretty good on, on time, actually. Uh, put in some jail doors here. Some beds. 
Prisoners do not like the stay in the holding cells um, overnight. They have a privacy concern, and actually a regular cell cannot accommodate more than one prisoner at a time. They just won't stay there. It doesn't matter what you do. If you build one uh, with a, uh, a regular cell with more than one bed, only one prisoner will actually stay there at night. I found that out the hard way uh, when I thought I had enough capacity and actually didn't, and all my prisoners rioted because they were all actually staying in the holding cell. Um, found out a little bit too late, and they killed all the guards. So it was not a good end. We're going to need some toilets, which means also we're going to need to put in our water utility. The large pipes are where you have to go to actually get the water distributed for long distances. The smaller pipes can make it go shorter distance, distances. Uh, looks like our capacitors are built, so we actually need to switch them on manually uh, as long as the power station, and then we're good to go. So again, this is going to be our kitchen area back here. And putting in the kitchen and the canteen. Where the heck did the canteen go? Ah, there we go. Sometimes I have such a hard time finding this. Kitchen's going to need some cookers. Three should suffice for the game. Some fridges, usually two will do. And we're going to need a sink, which I think I actually will go ahead and put right there. It won't be very far away from our pipes. And then for the canteen, we're going to need a serving table. Actually, probably two, which I think I will put. That's not, not the right direction. There we go. I'll put one there and one there. No, not there. There we go. And one there. And we want some tables. With some benches for them to sit on. Oh, that interferes with our serving table. Shit. Alright. Might not have plotted that one out as well as it could have. But I think I know how we can stuff another table in here. That should work. It's a little crammed, but that should work. And I actually am going to stop the job on one of the walls back there so we can add another door. That'll, that'll help with the flow of it a little bit. Alright, so we're doing pretty well here. We've got our holding cell, we've got kitchen, canteen, a staff room, some offices, and we're going to need a yard. Where should the yard be initially? I suppose we could be, be lazy and just put it down here, but... I feel like we should put it back here. Now, if we're going to put it back there, we need some doors for our folks to get back there. Although, actually, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to do some planning. And extend that wall. These are going to be our main corridors for the length of the prison. Alright, I'm going to need a north south corridor so that would be an excellent place to put it since the fences are already there I can just delete those fences that means our starter yard could be right here and I think that works about as well as anything it means we're going to have to put some foundations back here And once we do that, we're also going to want some doors. Door, door, and then we're going to need some fences for our yard. Okay. 
And pretty soon that'll be that'll be done. And we'll be pretty much ready to go. Let me go ahead and hire some guards. And some cooks. Oh, I need to hook up my kitchen equipment to electricity. That's an important thing to remember. So, that. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm actually going to go ahead and make this other Ford temporary room a storage area as well, because it looks like our existing storage is filling up. So, do that. I'm going to replace these fences with walls here, and that one as well. Doors are open. All right, everything looks good. Everything looks just about perfect. Oh, I know what I forgot, actually. I forgot a shower. Yes, your prisoners do need a shower every now and then. If you don't give them a shower, they will become very angry. It's yet another thing. That makes them angry. Prisoners, actually, it turns out, are very needy individuals. Um, and they will become very, very disturbed if you don't feed them enough, let's say. I know, crazy. So, shower would be... I feel like this would actually be a great place to put a shower. It's a little narrow, I don't know. I mean, it looks a little narrow for a shower, but it doesn't actually matter if the shower is narrow or not. If I add two doors, should be no problem getting people in there. Gonna want some drains. Strange thing about the drains is they only work if you put them where the door is. Don't know why. It's an alpha thing, I guess. But put those there. I'm gonna put in some shower heads. Is that what direction is that facing? All right, and we're gonna need to put in some pipes. Supply water to the shower heads. And it looks like our electrical infrastructure needs to be extended a little bit as well. It's not too surprising. A little bit of freeze there. That's probably because the auto save which is not a big deal and that does just about do it I'll go ahead and mark this as a shower so that when it's done we get credit for it and we get the moolah come on and there we go we got our we got our grant money okay and to get more grant money we just need to add some guards one two three one more, one more guard, one more guard. Come on, buddy. Okay. Oh shit! Exceeds daily budget. Okay, okay, okay. You can't actually exceed your budget until you get an account. So I don't have my account yet. I can't do that yet. Which reminds me, though, I will grab the grant for that, along with the grant for health and well-being. As, as soon as the staff well-being initiative is done, which will be the next day. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and do the health and well-being one. Uh, it's fairly simple, and we'll put the infirmary down um, down here. The infirmary doesn't need to be very big. Maybe just that big. And we already have an office for our psychologist, but we need to add some furnishings, so we'll just go ahead and do that. And also, I'm going to expand my perimeter fence because it's a little weak back here to have this one layer of fencing. That goes to the lake. I wonder if the prisoners can swim away. I have no idea. Uh, I've actually not played on a map with a lake yet. And the lake is an experimental feature. So I have no idea if they've actually thought about letting the prisoners swim away or not. 
We'll find out. I need those doors because otherwise people are going to potentially get stuck in the uh, back area here. You can do that. You can make your workers become stuck like a Sims, like a Sims game, and they won't starve to death, but they won't do any good either. Is this moaning about behind your perimeter fence? I'm not going to bother putting another bench there. Screw them. They can stand the prisoners. So we got about four hours till they arrive. This is actually probably a good place to stop our first episode of Alpha Game Reviews Let's Play, Prison Architect. We will pick this back up once we get some actual prisoners in here that cause some trouble. Thank you for watching, and if you like what you see, make sure to hit the subscribe button. This is Matt Doom Master signing off.